Hi guys, welcome back to Missy Smith's virtual classroom here in my spare bedroom. Um, so right now we're going to be working on the concept of a dog. So we're going to do a read aloud, a little dog sort, um, and then a song. So first off, the read aloud. <clears throat> this is called Part-Time Dog. Let's take a look at that cover. Part-time dog. Look at that puppy. See how happy he looks? He looks so happy playing in those leaves, doesn't he? I'm excited to read this book and find out what happens to him to make him so happy. Let's see here. A little brown dog with a wagging tail appeared on Maple Street one day. Hello, Brownie, the children said patting his head. Look at them petting the dog's head. Hey, where's your head? You touch your head. Do this. Touch your head. Good job. Brownie trotted to school with them. Go home, said the teacher. Where was home? Brownie trotted back to Maple Street. What is Brownie? Brownie is a dog. Mrs. Atkins was sweeping her walk. Brownie hurried to help her. Go home, Mrs. Atkins said kindly. Brownie went to the bank with Mrs. Butterworth. Go home, she said politely. He galloped to help Mrs. Tweedy rake her yard. Go home, she said politely and kindly. Everyone's being so nice and respectful to this. What is it? It's a dog, you're right. Brownie liked Maple Street. I don't blame him, I would like it too. People were kind to him. When the children came home, he chased a ball until his pink tongue lolled out. But then the children went into dinner and shut their doors, and Brownie had no place to go. He's happy in this picture, sad, maybe feeling lonely, a little in the blue zone in this picture. What is it? It's a dog. That's the sign for dog, by the way, in case you missed out on, in case you missed that boat. Okay, back to Brownie. He sniffed a garbage can for a bone or anything to eat. Nobody was his friend tonight because everybody thought that he was somebody else's dog. It's called the innocent bystander problem. It's a real thing. He slept under a porch, but he was cold and hungry and lonely. Oh, he looks sad. What is it? It's a dog. It's a dog, a sad dog. In the morning, Brownie was shivering, burr, because he was so cold, and his poor little stomach was empty. But he smelled a wonderful smell, and he ran to the door where the smell was coming from. Woof, he said. What do you think he smelled in the morning? Hmm. Breakfast, maybe? Let's find out. Mrs. Atkins looked down at him. Are you hungry? Woof! She gave him a beef bone that she had meant to make into soup and brownie gobbled down every bit. The bone was delicious. What is it? It's a dog. You're right. A dog. Much happier with a bone, huh? That night, brownie wasn't as hungry, but he was cold. He trotted to another door. Why don't you go home? Asked Mrs. Buttersworth. She looked out. Oh, it's snowing. Would you like to sleep in my kitchen? Woof. Mrs. Butterworth shut the living room door to keep Brownie off of her best blue sofa. Good night, she said, but the kitchen floor was hard. So after a while, Brownie pushed the door open and happily fell asleep on Mrs. Butterworth's best Blue sofa. The next morning, Mrs. Butterworth cried, Get off my sofa! Brownie politely said goodbye and left without waiting for breakfast. What's he doing? The dog is 
sleeping in the picture, you're right. He smelled coffee at another house, at another house, and trotted over, woof, just in time for breakfast, Mrs. Tweedy told him. She gave him a cup of coffee with cream and sugar and a piece of buttered toast to crunch. How many of you guys have coffee for breakfast? Just me? All right. Um, Brownie was warm and full of a buttered toast. Mm. He frisked to school with the Maple Street children. Look, the two kids, and then what is this? This is a, d a dog. Yeah. That night, he woofed at Miss Atkins' door, and she fed him some leftover lamb she had meant to make into stew. Then Brownie tried to Mrs. Buttersworth, forgetting about her best blue sofa. Mrs. Butterworth saw the snow. She looked into Brownie's trusting eyes, and she covered her best blue sofa with an old blanket. Poor Brownie. Oh, how nice. Hashtag be kind. In the morning, Brownie had coffee and toast with Mrs. Tweedy, and Miss Atkins gave him dinner every night until finally she told him, you are expensive to feed. I don't want a dog. Let's see if Mrs. Butterworth knows whose dog you really are. Brownie thought he was Maple Street's dog, but he was delighted to visit his friends, Mrs. Buttersworth. He sleeps on my best blue sofa, said Mrs. Buttersworth, but I don't know whose dog it is. I don't want a dog. Dogs leave hair on everything. Let's ask Miss Tweedy. I give him toast and coffee, Miss Tweedy told them, but I don't want a dog. I like to travel and a dog would tie me down. They all looked at Brownie, who looked back, trusting. What then next? He has no license, said Mrs. Atkins. He runs around loose, Miss Buttersworth added. We should call the dog catcher, Miss Tweedy decided. Brownie wagged his tail. I don't want to call the dog catcher, Miss Tweedy cried. He's such a nice dog, Miss Atkins moaned. I suppose I have to, said Mrs. Butterworth. Brownie stopped wagging his tail because Miss Buttersworth was unhappy. The dog watcher, dog catcher came. Brownie wagged his tail trustingly. Off Brownie went in the truck. What is it? It's a dog. We wave goodbye. Bye to Brownie. And that night, Mrs. Atkins cooked a pork chop for her dinner, but she couldn't eat. Next door, Mrs. Butterworth, she couldn't. Sleep. And the next morning, Miss Tweedy didn't enjoy her toast and coffee. He trusted us, she said. How could we be so mean? She grabbed her bag and off she went. Where do you think she's going to go? She met Mrs. Atkins and Mrs. Butterworth with their bags. I'm going to buy a license for Brownie and get him back, even if it does tie me down. Well, I was going to get him back, even if he is expensive to feed. Well, I was going to get him, even if he does leave dog air on me sofa. We can't be mean to someone who trusts us. Now, they all wanted Brownie. Finally, Mrs. Tweedy had an idea. We can put a fence around our three backyards so he can play there. I'll feed him breakfast. I love to see him lap up his coffee with sugar and cream. Um, and we can split him. He belongs to all of us. He's our part-time dog. Let's go get him, Miss Tweedy cried. They climbed into Mrs. Butterworth's car and rushed to the dog catchers where Brownie waited. Trusting. And Brownie sat in the front seat delighted to be a part-time dog as they all drove off to buy his license. Now, my friends, that is a great story about responsible um, pet owning. You know, you gotta have a license for your pet. You gotta make sure you know how you're gonna take care of it. And they work together to make this dog a part-time dog. What is it? A dog. You're right, very good. Okay, so that was our read aloud book. 
Good job listening. We're gonna go ahead and give you another token. Look at that. Good job listening to our story about the dog. All right, so now let's talk about, we're gonna sort some items. You ready? What, it's backwards, isn't it? Okay, it says, what goes with a dog? So I'm gonna hold up an object and you're gonna tell me, yes, it goes with the dog or no, it does not. What goes with the dog, ready? A collar. Yes, it goes with the dog. Collar, he wears it around his neck. Yes, it goes with the dog. Cranberry juice. Does cranberry juice go with the dog? No, cranberry juice is something you drink. It does not go with the dog. Coffee table. Coffee table does not go with the dog. It's a piece of furniture. Dog house. Yes, a dog house goes with the dog. It's where a dog can stay outside. Dog house. A bone. A bone goes with the dog. Yes, dogs chew on bones. Birthday candles. Birthday candles do not go with a dog. Pajamas. Pajamas do not go with a dog. You're right. So let's review what goes with a dog. What is it? Bone. What is it? Bone. Good job. What is it? Dog house. What is it? Dog house. You're right. What is it? Collar. What is it? Collar. Good. These all go with dogs. Huh. All right. Good job working and finding all of our objects that go with dogs and that don't go with dogs. Good sorting. <sighs> Next, we are going to sing a song, a little ditty you guys may or may not be familiar with about a farmer who had a dog and his name was Bingo! So I'm going to need you guys to sing with me. You ready? There was a farmer had a dog and Bingo was his name. Oh, B-I-N-G-O, 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 and Bingo was his name. the B and the I. There was a farmer had a dog and Bingo was his name. except for the last one. You ready? There was a farmer had a dog and bingo was 
And this time we're going to clap for all of the writers. There was a farmer had a dog and Bingo was his name. Oh. And Bingo was his name. Wonderful. So we read a story, we did a sort, we sang a song. Guess what? That's gonna be another token. Boop. One, two, three, four, five. If you've been following along, we have five tokens, so you can do free choice if you want. Hooray! Um, good job working, friends, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.